Hello, this is the Bridgewater College Teacher Education Program. We are here with another Smart Board tutorial. I'm Ben Martindale, a student in the Education Program. And I'm Vicki Denlinger, an instructor of mathematics here at the college. Today we'll be looking at hidden answers, which this is words above a circle. They're the same color as the background. Pool tabs, which this is a text box over top of a rectangle and Dragon Reveals, which this is a text box using different colors to match the background. Let's start with the Dragon Reveal. I'll drag down my text box here and I'll, you can see that what we have here are two rectangles that are connected. I have uh, grouped those together and my text box here I have my purple words that I will want revealed in the yellow section and my yellow words that will be revealed in the purple section. Now just as a reminder of how I was able to do that I can click my text box here and what I've done is I have grouped two different text box together was one technique that I decided to use and when I created my purple text box I just put it where I wanted it and then I dragged and I was able to group those together. Now how do I get it to be purple? Well I go over here and I highlight my text and I can go over to my tool palette and I can select a text color here. Now once I've done that I'll go ahead and group these back together and I drag them up into my box, put them where I want them and now I have my drag and reveal. Here we have a hidden answer. There is an angle that we want to find what its angle is in degrees and a protractor. We can move this protractor behind the angle and look. Not only does it match up to be 45 degrees, it says it right there. Now, the reason it's able to do that is due to layering. Here, the angle doesn't have an angle on it until we move the protractor. Then, the 45 degrees is revealed. 45 degrees is the same color as the background and it's also two objects grouped together. The protractor though is behind it. Now the way you can do this is right up here in this text, this little box here. Go to it, go to order, and you can either bring it in the front, bring it in the back. Bringing it forward brings it all the way forward, bring it to the front only moves it one layer forward. So if I bring this protractor forward, it's now in front of the angle. But I do want it behind it, so I can go to order and send it backwards. And now it's behind it, and it reveals what I want to reveal. Now the next slide here is actually just a working slide. If I were to create a presentation, then I would delete this when I was done with everything. So I'll show you where we're going with this working slide. We have a memory game here. This one happens to be geometry vocabulary. And I'm able to pull my tab. And I can pull a second tab. And if they were to be a match, then my team one would cover it. Now, these are not a match. So I'll put them back. And then the next person would go where the next team would go. Now, I happen to know that these two are a match so I have my word parallel and I have my example of parallel lines so if I were on team one then I can drag down a team one cover and I know that that's my match this is an infinite cloner to get my infinite cloner I'll take this one off really quick but I click my arrow here and I'm able to drag down to infinite cloner and now I have as many team one shapes to drag over my matches as I need and the same thing is true of the team two. Now I'll also point out here that everything is locked in place so that it's not deleted and I'll will actually insert another example here in just a minute but this my shapes, my green and red shapes, they're locked in place. They can't move anywhere. They cannot be delete, deleted. But my pull tabs here, my pull tabs are locked, 
but they're movable. So if I click there, this locks them in such a way that I won't delete them, but it also allows them to move. That way when I'm finished playing my game, I can click and drag over everything and I'm able to delete my Team 1 and Team 2 markers, but I'm not going to delete anything from my game board. So let's talk a little bit about how I got these um, pull tabs in. So I'll go back to my working screen here and you'll notice that I copied and pasted my green and my red shape here. Now Ben mentioned layering. This one here is layered properly because it is behind, it is not behind, the uh, green and the red are behind my pull tab. Now, in my pull tab is just my two shapes grouped together. On the other hand, this one is not. This actually has my pull tab behind my green and red, and I don't want it behind, so I'll click on it, and I'll do, use my selection arrow here, and I want to layer it in such a way that the order will bring it to the front. I want it in the front, and now it will be on top of my green and my red shapes. So now I have my pull tab that I can move. Now my those weren't locked in place which caused me a problem but that's okay. If I were on my game board I would make sure those were locked in place. Alright so let's go ahead and finish our game board. I have an angle here that I've created just with my line tool and this one happened to be a ray with one arrow on each end. And then I have a semicircle. I'll just group these together and I'll do the same thing here. These are grouped together and then I can copy them and I'll go back to my game board and I can paste it in. And the layering is just right on these so I don't need to change anything but I do want to make sure that I lock it in place but allow it to move. So locking, allow to move, and I'll go back and grab the match as well. I'll copy it and I'll paste it and I'll drag it to my other empty space over here and I'll do the same thing, make sure I lock it. but allow it to move. Alright, so I have finished my game board of memory and I'm ready to play. This has been the Bridgewater Teacher Education Program. I'm Ben Martindale. And I'm Vicki Denlinger. And we hope you have a great day.